Some of you may be aware I'm actually quite a massive fan of SteelSeries currently, and this thing literally is the bomb.com. But why is it so expensive? <laughs> Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I am Risa of the 4-piece variety, 4 triple XL. And the Aerox 5 has infected me with its awesomeness. Because what they've done is basically took the Rival 300 of like old and they've somewhat modded it more towards a Sensei. They've taken a Sensei and they've taken a Rival and they've smooshed them together and then drilled a whole bunch of holes in it to get the weight down and put in the Trimove Pro and then just nine programmable buttons to make what is honestly one of the best masks that I've ever used. But before I get too ahead of myself, let's start from the bottom. So if you flip over the mouse, you'll see two big PTFE feet on top and bottom and then one around the center hole. So there's absolutely no drag from this thing. This thing is so smooth, it's kind of spooky like how much glide there is. This is a 66 gram mouse and just look at it. It is incredibly smooth. This is like, it's so glossy, silky on the bottom that I actually felt like my mouse was more sensitive when I first started using it. I thought that the sensitivity had changed and that this wasn't actually on 400 DPI. I literally had to go into SS Engine and make sure that it was actually set at 400 DPI because of how smooth it was. It, it does make it initially feel a little bit more sensitive. But then you've got the sensor in the middle over there as I said, the TrueMove Pro, once again, 400 IPS and 40G acceleration, more than enough for those tasty flicks. Then on the left-hand side, we have four programmable buttons. They've gone with one at the front with the silver button, which is a little bit difficult to reach, to be honest, to get your hand all the way to the front there, bearing in mind I have 19 centimeter from tip to base of palm and about 10 across. So it's fitting really nicely in the hand in general. It's just that for my thumb, it's like awkwardly far forward. People with longer hands and stuff, you probably won't have the same issue. But the two other thumb buttons are exactly where I would want them. And then the one on top is a two-way, so it goes up and down. So it's actually five programmable buttons just on the side over there. Then just above the scroll, you'll see the normal DPI switch, which we're used to. Then obviously the scroll has its own button and then the scroll is quite nicely done as well. It's that feedback sort of type. It's not a free scroll. Rubberized as well. Very similar to what they've done in the Sensei 10 in the past. And then obviously you've got your left and your right click with indented grooves in them to catch your fingers nicely while you are in that position. And it's honestly one of the most comfortable ergo style mouses. It's going, like I say, a little bit in between the ergo and then the ambidextrous side. Then on the right hand side, it's just straightforward curved plastic nothing to really report on there. It does look like they were making this maybe with removable side pieces in mind. Perhaps um, you will see some later renditions come out with these being removable or replaceable. But for the time being, it's one solid product. Then the cable is a type C removable, which I really like that it is removable because if anything happens to your cable, you can quite easily replace it. And it's the super light, flexible variant. So you can see it snaking on the table there. Steel Series engine and the features therein are exactly as they have been before and there's no real reason to change it. It's basically perfect. So you can do your macros, etc. if you need to, to program the buttons on the side. And this mouse, just based on its setup, does sort of lend itself to more MOBA-esque environments, albeit because of the weight, it holds 66 grams for this mouse. It's one of the lightest that I've ever used. It also obviously lends itself quite nicely to FPS environments. Especially if you are someone that does a lot of finger tipping 
or does a lot of wrist sort of movement, then this will go down really nicely for you because of just how light it really is. I actually really like the RGB on this as well. I think it's been done pretty tastefully around the, around the bottom and around the edge over here. Diffusing is okay. It's not anything to write home about. You can quite clearly see where the LEDs are. But if you're looking at it from the back and you're just looking in like that, it's it does look quite nice. They've also uh, made sure to coat the PCBs inside. So if you are worried about dust and water wear, etc., it should be perfectly fine. My Model O basically just needs a new cable after two years and that's completely open so a lot of manufacturers are doing this at the moment and this is where we get the to performance because it is sublime there is just nothing like Trumoon you can ask my boy Kaz he's been one of the top CS players in the country and I introduced him to Trumoon with a sensei and he, every time I use another mouse he calls me a traitor because like of how good Trumoon is as far as snapping onto angles and making flicks and your general tracking it becomes an extension of yourself very quickly this is the only center that has absolute one-for-one -one tracking. There's no Logitech, there's no Razer, there's nothing that can compare to these sensors. Now, the elephant in the room is obviously the price. Currently, these are 1,900 Rand for wired mass. I see a lot of you go already going tilt in the comments. Oh, but a Model D wireless is 1,000, etc., etc. Yes, and they are incredibly good bang for buck. But if you want the best of the best, this is it now. The Aerox 5 wireless is also available at eTech. It's 2,900 Rand. And these prices aren't going to be reflective of what you see like on Amazon, for instance, because in the US, they only have one year warranty on steel series products, whereas we buy from the EU side, which has got a two year warranty on it. So just consider that when you do look at the pricing and stuff. And that's what I sort of saw in Euros as well, is that the price is quite high at the moment. Obviously, it's a new product, new launch, so it is going to drive some extra price. But on a, if you like a Rival 300 shape and you want pretty much the best version of that, this is it. Everything on here, minus this front button, was absolutely perfect to me. There's nothing to really change over here. It's, all, it's, it's as close to being as perfect product as sort of humanly possible and I mean can you really put a price on winning because yeah this is uh, still used by some of the best FPS gamers in the world uh, certain phase individuals as well that have just recently won majors off of these mice and the sensor so yeah if you needed a uh, uh, an example of that um, then th th look no further it genuinely is something just out of this world and it's completely different from any other mouse experience and I really, really am going to need to get one of these. I'm just going to wait for that price point to come down a little bit. I think if it was closer to like one and a half, even as a new product, I think that would be a lot more in line with its spec and features and stuff. And it would still be premium, but not like a thousand nine hundred grand premium. It's a little bit much. Anywho, that is all I have for you on the Aerox 5. I've got the Aerox 9 as well, which has like a whole keyboard on the side of it. So I'm going to go do some programming on that and do some macros and stuff and fiddle around with it and have some fun. And maybe I'll do a short video of me doing some cool stuff with that uh, as an extra for that review. But that will be coming out probably early next week. So until then, hope you guys stay safe, keep well, and I will see you on the flip side.